Hello, saints. Peace, love, grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day out there today. In our last study, we followed Paul and Barnabas on their first major trip as they traveled from Antioch to Cyprus up to Pamphylia and Iconium. And we saw Lystra, where Paul was almost killed by stoning, then down to Derb. Then we saw how Paul and Barnabas followed their tracks, if you will, backtracking where they came from. Then they traveled back to Antioch to debrief everyone about what just took place on their trip. How many Jews and Gentiles were added to the body of Christ? The year is approximately 48, 49 AD. This is about 14 to 15 years after Paul's conversion in Christ Jesus. Now we turn to chapter 15 in the book of Acts. We're seeing the transition take place, a shift, a shift from the Mosaic law system to the kingdom gospel. They think they're in the last days here. There's a shift going on over to the mystery, the revelation of the gospel of grace, this body of believers, which consists of both Jews and Gentiles. As this transition is taking place from the kingdom to grace, we're seeing some bumps in the road, some problems arise. And for the most part, it's going to be about the laws uh, that the Gentiles will have to follow. Now, remember, the Jews are ingrained with this uh, being law minded. Their DNA consists of following the Mosaic protocol. And now they're trying to force these protocols onto the Gentiles. One of the concerns the Jews had was whether or not the Gentiles had to also be circumcised. And we'll see this discussion here in chapter 15 and how Paul is going to handle this accordingly. And we start out in verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas, and certain other of them, should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phenis and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. Now looking at the map here once again, the year is roughly 49 AD. Paul is traveling from Antioch down to Phoenicia and Samaria and on to Jerusalem for what we know as the Jerusalem Council. We're seeing the believing Jews pushing their laws onto the Gentiles. Paul knows that the mystery gospel contains no such thing, that the dispensation of grace contains no laws to follow. It's by faith alone. But in order for Paul to settle this once and for all, he's got to get it in writing. So that way, everyone will know certainly that the Gentiles, especially the body of Christ, is no longer under the Mosaic system no longer under the yoke of bondage that the Jews have placed themselves under. In verse 4, And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church, this assembly of believers, and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees. Now remember, Paul was a Pharisee, and there's also another sect called the Sadducees, which are sad because they don't believe in the resurrection. So there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them, them being the Gentiles, and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles, 
by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence, and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles, upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is, that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them, that they should abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely, Judas, surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them. After this manner, the apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard, that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, Ye must be circumcised, and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Saul and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth? So they sent further witnesses along with them to confirm this agreement among the Jews and Gentiles. And also they'll bring with them a signed letter which details and outlines this agreement that no laws should be placed on the Gentile believers, especially circumcision. Verse 28 For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols. The word meats here is simply food, okay? That ye abstain from foods offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which, when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words, and confirmed them. And after they had tarried their space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding it pleased Silas to abide there still, Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. 
And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. Now, we're in the year 49 AD to 50 AD. The Jews are being expelled from Rome. There's a huge persecution going on trying to get all the Jews out of Rome, especially those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Messiah. This is the timeline where Paul wrote the book of Galatians. His next book will be Thessalonians, but that doesn't come till much later when Paul's in the city of Corinth. Then he'll write Corinthians from Ephesus, and we'll see that all in our future studies. Now, if you read the book of Galatians, you'll discover what Paul had to go through for the past few years, dealing with the law-minded Jews, trying to hold on to the laws, a different gospel Paul calls it, adding on to the gospel of grace by trying to attach laws for the Gentiles to follow. And Paul writes in Galatians how serious this is. Paul warns them about adding works to the gospel of grace. Faith plus circumcision. Faith plus water baptism. Faith plus speaking in tongues. Faith plus worshiping on the Sabbath. Faith plus good works to earn or keep salvation. It's another gospel. Paul warns them sternly in Galatians 1. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You see, Paul says it's not another gospel because they did believe in Jesus Christ, but they were perverting the gospel by adding on to the gospel, adding works. Paul continues in verse 8, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, he repeats it, If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Paul took the simplicity and the purity of the dispensation of grace seriously. This new gospel, building a body of believers, of both Jews and Gentiles, he took this very seriously, and for good reason, I might add. And he warns them not to add anything to his gospel that he taught them about. The simplicity of the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, Verse 1 through 4. It's that simple. Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. Notice how different it is from Peter's gospel of repent, be baptized, and endure till the end. There's two different gospels here. Paul's gospel is all about trusting and believing on Christ Jesus to save them from God's wrath to seal them with the Holy Spirit, to keep them forever, to be baptized once by the Holy Spirit, the faith of Jesus Christ, keeping them saved for eternity. Paul warns them about adding on to this simple gospel. Even today we're warned, and that's why right division is so important. We need to make God's truth our only source of truth and nothing else. Also, in the next chapter, in chapter 16, we're about to embark on Paul's second trip, his second journey, to both visit the body of Christ that he'd previously established, and also to continue persuading the Jews that they needed to believe who Jesus was, their Messiah, and also their reason for his death, burial, and resurrection, Paul's gospel of grace. This transition is in full swing. Paul calls it his gospel. Jesus revealed it to Paul and Paul alone. That's what the revelation is all about. The mystery, the secret hid within God since before the foundation of the world. Verse 37, And Barnabas determined to take with, him, with them John, whose surname was Mark. This is John Mark. This is the same John 
that abandoned Paul and Barnabas early in the first journey. Verse 38, But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to work. And the contention was so sharp between them, that they departed asunder from one another, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. So, looking at our trusty map here on the screen, Barnabas and Mark sailed to Cyprus, where Barnabas is from. Paul and Barnabas' friendship is on the rocks at this point, but they'll forgive each other in the future, and they'll forget about this little argument they had. Paul and Silas start off through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the body of Christ, visiting our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, checking up on them. These are small groups they established on their first journey. Along the way, we're now introduced to Timothy. Paul and Silas will take Timothy along with them on this second journey. They're going to travel through Galatia. Then, the Holy Spirit's going to forbid them to go through Asia at this point, And they'll travel across Myasia and over to the port city of Traus. And that's all coming up in the next chapter, chapter 16 of our study on the book of Acts. Till then, peace, grace, love of Christ Jesus be with all of you. Lord willing, well, I'll see you on the next study.